I really want you to try and get more out of your phones. Try to cover this at least once a year. Desktop modes from your smartphone. Phones are crazy powerful and there's a lot more we could be doing with that compute power. There's a premier tier, companies that really try to polish up that experience. Been talking about this since Huawei started showing off a desktop mode. Forked over to Honor. This is the Honor Magic Pro 4, newly updated to Android 13. It has a really nice uh, desktop mode on it. Best desktop mode on the market today comes from Motorola. Moto Ready 4 is fantastic. I always love an excuse to hold up an LG phone in one of my videos like the Velvet or the V60. These were running Screen Plus. And of course, Samsung devices running DeX. But there's the other side of this equation too. There's an alternate video output mode that's built directly into Android. You can find this as one of the options down in your developer settings and it's called the desktop mode but it's super rudimentary. Basically, we take a phone that can output video through the USB-C and we can plug that into another screen, another monitor, and we get a different image on the display than what's on our phone screen. Up to Android 12, this was really basic, but it still came in handy. Our phones are really tall and skinny, and so when we try to just mirror this onto a 16 by nine monitor or a television, we get a lot of letterboxing or just a ridiculous vertical stripe in the middle of the screen. Basic wallpaper, a little app drawer, but we can at least put one app at a time, up full screen properly at this aspect ratio until we get to Android 13. I've been test driving this on a couple of phones, phones that have been updated and phones that have launched this year. OnePlus 10 Pro, video output on that USB-C, ditto the Xperia 1 Mark IV, and my Vivo X90 Pro. And here's the first bummer, Android 13 has pretty much broken the alternative video output home mode. So yes, we can activate that desktop mode and we can plug the phone in and we're gonna see that desktop, but on every phone I've tried it on, the app drawer has pretty much been broken. If you can click on it at all, you'll get this weird sort of mangled strip and you can't even search for the apps that you'd be able to put on full screen. I'm actually reshooting part of this video because ETA Prime beat me by this much in talking about an app that's gonna help flesh out that built-in Android desktop mode. I love his channel, he makes great stuff. Totally beat me to the punch on this one. I was putting this video together for days. So he has also been showing off the Razer Edge. I have it upside down. Razer Edge is a little mini gaming tablet. I really want you to watch ETA Prime's video also, but his focus is a little bit more on gaming. My conversation on phone desktop modes has also overlapped with other things like productivity and content creation, being able to multitask, or then also being able to kick back and edit a little video from the camera you probably shot the video with. Anything we can do to get the compute power out of the phone and then maybe overlap it. Maybe your phone can already displace your need to carry a laptop, a tablet, or to turn to a desktop for more robust work. The app I'm gonna point you to comes from developer Braden Farmer. It's called Taskbar, and it's a simple overlay that gives us some of those controls that we would expect, the UI we would expect from a proper Chromebook or laptop style UI. We've got a true 16 by nine aspect ratio on my next dock. This is a little laptop dock that it's got all the trappings of a laptop, but none of the compute guts. It's all powered from your phone or from your tablet. I can come down here and tap on my Firefox icon and you see a little window pops up. I can move it all around. I've got the ability to full screen it or I can close that out. Still pretty rudimentary. It doesn't have all of the like snap to the sides or other features that more robust desktop modes like Moto Ready 4. We don't have all of that, those nice UI elements, but this is significantly more functional than what's just sort of naturally baked into Android. Braden has done a fantastic job of improving on this alternate video out. This is powering that, but you also can use your phone or tablet as a totally standalone device. You can you really multitask. You have a couple things going on on the bigger screen and still use your phone or tablet as a phone or tablet. Showing this on the Razer Edge though is a bit of a cheat because this is still running Android 12. This has slightly better support for that alternative desktop video out mode that's baked into Android. Things get a little broken when we switch to Android 13. I can take my Vivo X90 Pro here, plug that in. We get that great desktop view pop up. It's running taskbar. I'm gonna come in here, tap my Firefox icon, and something looks a little different. Yeah, I've got a browser here, but I don't have that top bar. I don't have the ability to grab the window and move it around. I can't full screen it, and I can't even close it. I'm kind of proper stuck, and as I click on other apps that pop up, I have a really hard time managing a multi-window experience here. <laughs> That's what's really frustrating. A number of the Android 13 devices that I've tried out in this respect, like my Xperia 1 Mark IV, 
Similarly, I don't have all of the UI controls to properly use this environment. In years past, when we've talked about desktop modes, I usually turn to OnePlus devices because we would get a beta build of a new version of Android relatively quickly. And unlike Pixel devices, Pixel phones don't have video output through that USB-C. OnePlus has actually been one of the better solutions for doing this. I've been checking in on this feature for a couple years now. So here, when I plug in my OnePlus 10 Pro, I get my desktop mode and I'm going to tap on that Firefox icon. And the OnePlus 10 Pro is polished up just a little bit better on Android 13. I've got the full screen and I've got the ability to close that window. This is the huge frustration. We've got so much power in these devices. We can't get that compute power to other displays. But the great thing is, there are settings in taskbar where you can automatically launch full screen. So even though we don't have the best multitasking environment like we would have on Samsung DeX or Moto Ready 4, at least taskbar can get us back to the functionality in Android 13 that we lost from Android 12. Full screen, one app at a time, 16 by nine, and you can still use your phone to do other things. It's powering the desktop and they're separate UIs. This is a growing concern for me because our phones are legitimately getting more and more power. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that's coming out in new phones this year is a ridiculously powerful chip to put into a pocket computer that's only going to be used for covering the basics. Moving from the OnePlus 10 Pro to the OnePlus 11 in saving costs, this is a phone that just does the phone things because it doesn't have video output from the USB-C. It's more powerful and it runs cooler, especially when you're doing something like gaming, but we don't have the flexibility to do other computer things with this phone where the OnePlus 10 Pro was pretty much game for anything you wanted to hook it up to. And it's just increasingly silly as we look at the mid-ranger market. Our mid-rangers are ridiculously overpowered for this idea of average consumers covering the basics. Because I think one of the major issues that we run into is the idea of a desktop mode often only goes to the most expensive premium tier devices. Someone who can afford to spend around $1,000 on a phone is likely that person who also has the means to afford a couple tablets, a laptop, a desktop for their family. It's once we can start pushing these kinds of features into $500 phones and cheaper phones, we'll be able to realize the potential of a desktop mode. From your circle of family and friends, there are probably people who are struggling to kind of keep pace with the technology of the day. And then we we have to acknowledge the incredible number of people around the globe who a phone this might be the only computer they ever get their hands on a $400 phone with a monster mid-ranger processor is likely all the compute power someone really needs to get a significant chunk of their daily computing tasks and daily work done. But we can't get there if we don't keep iterating on this idea, and we can't keep iterating on this idea if we lose this functionality, especially at the premium tier. It's totally fair. There are consumers out there who are going to have a phone that does phone things, and a tablet that does tablet things, and a laptop that does laptop things, and a desktop that does the desktop things. But I truly believe there are many, many more people who would be perfectly well served with just this level of compute power if they could move it to different displays. The desktop mode is critically important to that conversation. Now I'm pointing to desktop modes because I really like this idea of compute power. I don't really care what form factor the compute power comes in. I want to be able to use that compute power anywhere I can. The more we play around with this idea, we might even get to a point where we can streamline this interaction for specific consumers. I think this is really exciting stuff where we can solve some of the issues of a pocketable computer. Like for example, this is my Xperia 1 Mark IV. It's a very tall and skinny phone and you can see how silly this looks. I've pulled up my video editing software. This is LumaFusion. So yeah, this looks super goofy. I'm, I'm scrubbing through my timeline. This is a video cut of a recent podcast episode and you wouldn't probably want to use it like this, but they just recently updated the app so that it can take over an external display. I don't have the desktop mode set up, but I tap one little button here and I can edit from the phone. I have all my controls, all my plugins. I can dedicate more of the phone space to doing the work and I can send the preview. This is a 16 by nine video properly displayed on a 16 by nine screen. There are so many apps that should be able to take advantage of this kind of display out hardware. Doing PowerPoint style presentations or working on larger spreadsheets. You've got a canvas that you can send video to 
while you're doing the work from a smaller screen. And this would be epic for gaming. Maybe your phone turns into some kind of controller or an alternate map view, but the main gameplay can go up to a TV. There's so much we could be doing with this, we're just barely scratching the surface of it now. All of this compute power is just kind of going to waste. So please catch that ETA Prime video. He does an amazing job of talking about gaming on the Razer Edge. I'm gonna have a bit more to say because I've really enjoyed my time this little gaming tablet. I think the idea of a gaming tablet has a lot of merit. There's a lot of untapped potential there. And I also hope you'll take the time to kind of look at your collection of gadgets, what, what equipment you have in your home, and see where maybe the compute power you have in your pocket can overlap or displace the compute power of another product. It's a really fun challenge and hopefully can also save you some money along the way. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been fantastic. If you're clicking on links, visiting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Mastodons, playing around a little bit more with the flickers. I do my podcast on the Twitch, a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.